Support WrestleTalk! Give us a subscribe. After nailing his gimmicks mix of legit MMA offense with comedy stonerisms in NXT as part of the fantastic Broserweights tag team with Pete Dunne, Matt Riddle was called up to the main roster in June where his whole character quickly became, you're the guy who wrestles without shoes. He entered the compulsory first feud with Baron Corbin and then became a bit lost on SmackDown's mid-card. Because where there's smoke, there tends to be fire. That's a cannabis joke. Riddle keeps seemingly rubbing people backstage the wrong way. You wanna go clockwise backstage? Clockwise, I keep telling them, not counterclockwise. It goes against the grain of Braun Strowman's baby beard. Getting himself heat from such big names as Brock Lesnar, Goldberg, Seth Rollins, and even Vince McMahon himself. Riddle has dismissed this as just high school catty, he said this, people who just can't take a joke or work. Whatever he was doing backstage, it wasn't working though. Until now. After being drafted to Raw in October and being booked to lose on back-to-back -back weeks, Riddle reportedly turned the locker room's opinion of him around by giving Sheamus a great Survivor Series qualifying match despite people thinking he'd sulk because he was booked to lose again. This might be the reason WWE officials eventually decided to add him to the men's Survivor Series team. He's been featured prominently in the weeks since, not just being booked in high-profile matches like the sudden death number one contender's triple threat and now currently feuding with Bobby Lashley over the United States title, but also in multiple backstage segments where he's getting over his gimmick. And this is apparently because Vince McMahon finally understands him. He's the stoner guy who can wrestle really well. Which is kind of what we all already knew from the Indies and NXT, but by Vince's standards, he figured this out in six months, so this is actually amazing. According to Dave Meltzer on Wrestling Observer Radio, while Vince might not understand Riddle's bro gimmick, he likes the guy and thinks he's funny in his own weird way. We got to keep him on TV. Unfortunately, in that same report, Meltzer did admit he doesn't know if McMahon would want to push him to a main event, as when Vince sees you as a comedy figure, it historically limits you to the mid-card. Riddle to 24-7 championship confirmed. But who knows what Vince actually thinks in 2020, as Lars Sullivan, the 6 foot 3, 330 pound freak, has gone missing from WWE again. Lars hasn't been seen on SmackDown for a month now, with reports having him not used in the Survivor Series pre-show battle royal because they wanted to keep him special, not waste him in a throwaway match. But according to Ringside News, unlike other wrestlers not currently being used, Sullivan isn't even showing up backstage for tapings. Apparently his absences aren't injury related. Perhaps he's one of the several big guys McMahon reportedly threw a fit over last week, where he apparently sent Otis, Keith Lee, Dabakato, Mace, and that huge guy, Omos, back to the performance performance centre for twice a week classes run by Drew Gulak and Adam Pearce so they can improve their in-ring work. Hopefully this is just to finesse their big guy WWE style ahead of some big 2021 pushes. Because if Vince genuinely thinks Keith Lee can't work, we're doomed. Before we get on with the rest of the news, I'd just like to say a huge thank you to this video's sponsor, Manscaped.com. You know that scene in the Santa Claus where Tim Allen shaves his face but a giant Father Christmas beard grows back right away? Those are your balls. So visit Manscaped.com using our special link in the video description below to get 20% off, where I recommend the world's first all-in-one men's grooming kit that has you covered from head to toe. Their brand new performance package. The performance package improves on the perfect package as not only does it come with the brilliant Lawn Mower 3.0 trimmer. Here it is, I've put all of this in my pocket. Mm, it's got a little light there because it's dark. It's so desperately dark down there. And this lights the way to smooth, smooth skin. There's also, in my magical pocket here, the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and the Crop Reviver Ball Toner Spray. I used it over that horribly hot summer. My entire household thanks you, Manscaped. And the performance package also now includes the Weed Whacker Nose and Ear Hair Trimmer. Masterpiece of engineering, especially to get my nose hairs. Got one the other day that was honestly thicker and denser than steel and this got through it. And the luxury Shears 2.0 nail kit. Mmm, I'm a clipper guy. Mmm, snippity snip snip snip.
Girls look at your nails and nose hair more than you'd think. And if you don't do something about it, they'll just start annoyingly plucking out hairs when you're not looking. So celebrate Christmas early and buy yourself the performance package from manscaped.com forward slash WTTV, where if you use our links and promo code, you'll get free international shipping, 20% off, and two free gifts. The Shed Travel Bag and Manscaped's excellent anti-chafing boxer briefs. Your jingle balls. Well, thank you. Leon Ruff only officially signed with NXT in October, after losing all four of the matches he'd had in the promotion in 2020, which made it rather surprising when he beat Johnny Gargano to win the NXT North American Championship on the 11th of November. Ruff was booked as a pretty weak champion in the month since, only retaining the following week because of DQ, and losing the title back to Gargano at last week's TakeOver War Games with a 25-day reign. Now, according to Dave Meltzer discussing the not-so-memorable championship run on the Wrestling Observer Forum, he's revealed the real reason Ruff was given the belt. Because somebody in creative thought it was funny. It's nice to see that NXT books their championships with the same reasoning I use to draw penises on my girlfriend's notebooks. But it seems you can only push NXT wrestlers so far before they begin to push back. A lot of WWE's controversial business practices this year have disproportionately affected the main roster. Raw suffered the bulk of April's TV wrestler cuts, and the new rule where WWE controls their talent's Twitch and third-party platform accounts currently only applies to the main roster. It's likely a matter of time before this trickles down to NXT, though. And now news has come out that several wrestlers are resisting WWE's attempts to own their very soul. Gotta feed The Undertaker somehow. He'll by nature have found that WWE filed to trademark the names of Drew Gulak, Pete Dunne, Tony Nese, Justice, and Mia Yim earlier this year. They have now submitted additional applications for Mercedes Martinez, Malcolm Bivens, and Raquel Gonzalez. But they've reportedly all suffered the same setback. A lack of written consent from talent who perform under the character names. In the case of Mercedes and Yim, both have actually filed for their own name trademarks, as they've wrestled outside WWE under them for years. It's easy to think that all the animosity and wrestling only occurs in WWE. Outside McMahon's hyper-competitive workplace, wrestlers skip and dance and talk about all the cool flips they're going to do. Incorrect, because FTR are hard bastards. On a recent episode of his podcast, Jim Ross said the high spot evolution of the business is bull S word, arguing that super kicks and DDTs should be finishers. But most of his fury was reserved for that ever present feature in modern wrestling, the dot 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 dive. I told a kid the other day at AEW that everybody does the same thing spot. All you guys go outside, you cluster up like coils, you stand there in a huddle, friends and foes together, side by side, so you can catch some leaping idiot going over the top rope who never wins with this move. They are looking for the holy sh** chant. They love to hear this is awesome. It's a spot, folks. It's a trapeze act. I don't buy into that. WrestlingNews.co reached out to several AEW wrestlers to get their thoughts on JR's podcast comments, where, unsurprisingly, they didn't much like the guy who is supposed to help put us over going out there and publicly burying us. In contrast to people like Jerry Lynn, who gives feedback with constructive criticism backstage. And that divide has flared up in the tag division. Thanks for your support on Patreon. He's no jackass, Dano, and the rocket, Dan Van Sky. Leaning into the dot 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 dive meme, Brandon Cutler promoted his big 7 vs 7 match, which isn't sadly just Dustin Rhodes vs Dustin Rhodes, of him, the best friends, top flight and varsity blondes, versus the inner circle, tweeting, We're gonna go outside, cluster up like coils, stand there in a huddle, friends and foes together side by side, to catch some leaping idiot going over the top. Can't wait! 8pm TNT! Hopefully for 1 million viewers! Let's effing go! Which prompted the all fists, no flips, former AEW Tag Team Champion Dax Harwood to tweet seemingly in response. Imagine not listening to criticism from the men and women who've shaped our profession and paved the road that allows you to make a living today, all because they hurt your feelings. What do you think about the high spot focused modern style of wrestling? Let me know in the comments down below where I'll be replying to people. From out of nowhere with a Canadian destroyer on the ring apron for a near fall in the second match on the card. My answer is quite simply. Please.
Whatever Kenny Omega's doing. Just 10 days after winning the AEW Championship on Dynamite, and the same week as showing up on Impact Wrestling TV, Omega defeated Laredo Kid at AAA's Triple Mania 28 show on Saturday thanks to interference from Michael Nakazawa, retaining the AAA Mega Championship he's now held for 421 days. Interestingly, now breaking his fellow AEW star Phoenix's 420 day reign before him. Please give me a dynamite match between them. Before that though, it's been announced Omega will face Joey Janela on this Wednesday's episode in a no DQ anything goes match. Pulling a Rick Rude, Omega appeared on Impact's final resolution pay-per-view that same night in a pre-taped segment with Don Callis and Carl Anderson. The Wrestling Observer has added Omega will appear on this Tuesday's episode of Impact 2, where he's expected to announce a match against an Impact star. Who do you want to see him face? Let me know in the comments. Anderson is apparently looking forward to seeing his former Bullet Club buddy again, tweeting, See you Tuesday on Impact Wrestling, brother. With love, the machine gun. Our new Japan's Tamatonga has contradicted the old Bullet Club 444. 444 Life membership duration, tweeting, If you're not in Bullet Club 2020, you're not. Bullet Club. This comes as New Japan is preparing itself for their biggest show of the year on January 4th and 5th, Wrestle Kingdom 15, where it's speculated we'll get appearances from AEW stars like John Moxley, who's also the promotion's current IWGP United States Champion, Brody Lee, who's been missing from AEW for two months now, potentially quarantining ahead of a New Japan debut, and even maybe Kenny Omega, if the forbidden door really is open. New Japan has now confirmed several more big matches for that show, including Horseshoe Tanahashi vs. Great Okan, Hiroshi Takahashi vs. Super J Cup winner El Fantasmo, and Zack Sabre Jr. and Taichi vs. Tamatonga and Tangaloa for the heavyweight tag team titles on night one. And on night two, Sonada vs. Evil, Shingo Takagai vs. Jeff Cobb, and whoever wins out of Takahashi and Fantasmo on night one will face IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion Taiji Ishimori. Kenny Omega to New Japan confirmed. What are the 10 worst, most hilarious gimmicks WWE wrestlers ever had? Click the video on the right for Adam Blompier's latest list and find out more about McMahon's backstage tantrum over Keith Lee by clicking the Wrestle Talk News video below that. I've been Mr. Davis. I will be your jam that champion for the rest of the year. I'm sure Laurie will step aside for TLC. Jam that jam. <laughs>